plastic oil pump gears. It doesn't sound like a good idea, and unfortunately, all KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas 250 and 350cc models pre-2023 have these plastic oil pump gears. The motocross bikes, the enduro bikes, and the cross-country bikes all suffer from this problem. The problem being is that with excessive heat, this larger idler gear can warp or break teeth and lose contact with this smaller oil pump gear. This can cause a loss of oil pressure, and when you lose oil pressure, your motor's done. Fortunately for us, KTM realized their mistake, and the last year of this generation, they actually changed the part number for these gears to a new part number, and that part is now metal. So I've ordered those new gears, and this video, I'm gonna be taking you through the process of changing out the plastic oil pump gears for the new metal gears. First things first, we're gonna drain the oil. You don't have to do this if you're gonna lay the bike on its side, but my bike was due for a service, so I did it anyway. Then we're gonna drain all the coolant out of the bike. We need to remove the rear brake arm to be able to remove the side cover. So first, remove the return spring, the eight millimeter bolt, then the T45 bolt and 13 millimeter nut. Loosen the hose clamp and push the hose off and out of the way. I then remove the rest of the bolts from the water pump housing and remove the impeller nut, which is right hand thread like a normal nut. I then use two flat blade screwdrivers to carefully lift the top half of the water pump impeller so that I can remove it. Remove all the clutch side cover bolts and carefully lift up on the little tabs built into the side cover to remove it. The other half of the water pump impeller will come off with it. Then in an even crisscross pattern, gradually loosen the clutch bolts and remove them. Take note which numbered hole your bolt is set to on the spring retainer so that we can put the bolts back in the same spot later. For example, my bolts are in the number two hole. Then remove the clutch spring retainer, bevel spring, pretension ring, and clutch pressure plate. Then carefully remove the clutch drive sleeves. I have dropped one of these in the engine before, so I recommend using a magnet. You can then remove all the clutch fiber and steel discs, keeping them in the same order that they came out. Remove the clutch push rod, and then with the clutch hub holding tool to hold the hub steady, you can flatten the lock washer with a flat bladed screwdriver and then undo the clutch hub nut. Remove the clutch hub and the large washer, which is sometimes stuck to the back of the hub, then remove the clutch basket. With it may come the bearing and sleeve, but it doesn't matter if not. Then use some paper towel or a rag to cover all the voids in the engine case so that if we drop anything, it won't get lost and turn a small job into a big job. Then turn the primary drive gear to top dead center and line the dots on the gears up with each other. You then need a way to jam the gears so that you can loosen the nut. You can use the proper gear jammer tool, or like me, you can use two thick copper washers to jam the gear. Whatever you use has to be softer metal than the steel gears as to not damage them. I've also seen someone use an aluminum bottle opener. This nut is left-hand thread, so needs to be loosened clockwise. Mine had a ton of thread lock on it and was a pain to remove, so some leverage is recommended. You can then remove the primary drive gear, or like me, I had to use a gear puller as it was a little hard to get off. Then with a magnet and some circlet pliers, carefully remove the circlet and washer on the oil pump intermediate gear. and that's why we cover the voids in the engine case. Then you can remove the intermediate gear. There is another washer behind the gear, sometimes stuck to the back of the gear. If not, just leave it on the engine as it doesn't need to come off. Next, remove the circlip and washer for the oil pump gear, being careful not to lose the pin that is through the shaft. Then you can replace it with a new steel oil pump gear. Then reinstall the washer and circlip. This part can be fiddly as the oil pump shaft moves back and forth a little bit. Reinstall the washer if you removed it, the new steel intermediate gear, then the other washer followed by the circlip. Reinstall the primary drive gear, making sure to line up those timing marks. Use some blue Loctite on the nut and with your gear jammer of choice on the other side, torque the nut to 120 Newton meters. Remove the paper towel or the rags that you use to cover the voids in the engine, making sure not to leave any behind. You can then reinstall the clutch basket, washer, clutch hub, locking washer and nut, torquing it to 100 Newton meters. Fold up the wings on your locking washer with your tool of choice. I just used a flat blade screwdriver and a punch. Install the clutch drive sleeves, then you can reinstall the clutch plates, starting with the one millimeter thick steel disc, usually marked with an S, then alternating between fiber and steel plates, finishing with the other one millimeter thick disc marked with an S facing up. Then reinstall your clutch push rod, followed by the pressure plate, pretension ring, bevel spring, and clutch spring retainer. 
Install your bolts in the same numbered hole settings as when you pulled it apart, slowly tightening in a crisscross pattern until you reach six Newton meters. You can then reinstall your clutch side cover. Place the bottom half of the water pump impeller on the shaft until it's flush with the case, then place the top half of the impeller on top, rotating slightly until the veins drop into the lower half. Put some blue Loctite on the nut and tighten to six Newton meters. Reinstall the water pump housing and loosely tighten the bolts, making sure the bolt with the copper washer goes on the bottom hole. Then you can install the side cover bolts. The bolt with the washer is for the hole just behind the water pump spout. It may be easier to install the side cover bolts before the water pump housing. Tighten all the side cover bolts and water pump bolts to 10 Newton meters. Reinstall your radiator hose and tighten the hose clamp. Finally, reinstall your rear brake pedal with some blue lock tight on the bolts. And don't forget the return spring. Also, don't forget to fill your bike back up with coolant and oil and enjoy the feeling of the added reliability that steel oil pump gears have added to your bike. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I should mention that Mike at Taco Moto Co on YouTube has a great video on this exact same process where he goes more in depth and shares a few different tips and tricks to help get the job done. He also sells his own billet oil pump gears, which look like a great product and definitely worth checking out. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it helpful and you want to see more how-tos, bike builds and riding, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.